babies. Some guy from some guy who works on Chrysler's all the time is gonna lay a comment in there like, yeah man, uh, there's an easier way to do that. Okay. There is sometimes. But you can't always get it. I'm gonna uh, drive down to the little corner store. Do you need anything? No. <laughs> I need popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> There we go, finally. It's this rubber gasket, which is nice, but it actually becomes so, it almost glues itself to it. Let's get this out of there. And then you have to, you just gotta be gentle. And you know, somebody else might not, might have gotten it off quicker than me, but I'll tell you what. Uh, it's what I love about being my own person and not having to do the, the micromanage type job where you only fix half of the problem, where you don't have enough time to uh, do it the best possible way. And believe me, I know a couple shops that uh, do do it the right way. Oof. Oof. Yeah, so somebody with the year of this vehicle, you can obviously see somebody has not been changing the oil when they're supposed to, or this, ugh. So I'm gonna go take this over, clean it prep it. So, uh, yeah, let me, uh, just here right now. I'll just let you see because I'm going to actually pause this, but on this uh, right here, let me move this over here, I'm sure you can see these right here are your spark plug tubes. What happens is um, there's a seal that's on here. I got some pictures, I'll have my wife post them, but um, what happens is you have O-rings that sit inside of here. And then as it goes on, or it gets old, like you can see, they get dry rotted and they end up seeping. This is actually, this is number one, this is the one that was leaking and it's like built up with oil right here. And the worst part about it is probably, well, there's nothing you can do, but this is, this carbon buildup that comes in, that you get inside of here is really, and this is the truth, it's not in here because um, that's just what motors do. What happens is this is a buildup of, let's just say, say you use semi-synthetic and um, you drive your car for, because it's semi-synthetic, you drive, uh, you don't change your oil for, let's say uh, 5,000 miles. This buildup that gets in here that, this, that messes up your motor, that causes uh, excessive wear and tear on your rocker arms, or these are, these are rocker arms, but these are actually called cam followers now. Um, uh, it causes them to wear more because like you can see, this carbon buildup isn't because of bad gas. This isn't caused by you know, combustion leaking. I mean, part of it is, but your vehicle will never not have combustion leaking through the, um, the seals into the valve cover or into the crankcase. That's what a PVC valve is for. That's what these vents are right here is the vent, all the unbent spent gases and carbon monoxide inside of your motor into there. So logic tells you that if you don't change your oil when you're supposed to, this is what happens. Let me go get this, got a customer. Hold on. Right, okay, so real fast, I'm gonna go through it. I popped these off already. I had a customer, but uh, what happens is you could use the old style or you can use a spark plug or a screwdriver, but it's just easier to kind of pop them out. But this is how the old seals go in. 
Um, and then you just pop them out, boom, they're done. Um, and we always use Molly, so it actually comes with the new O-ring seals. This one, this kit actually comes with both valve covers. Uh, the customer doesn't want to do both, so we'll just keep this extra one. And then when the front leaks, then we'll have the extra. But uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go into pause mode right here because um, that's almost one o'clock. Or it is one o'clock. It might be one o'clock. And anyway, and I gotta I gotta get this done. So I'll come back in once I get this on, and uh, we'll go into. Uh, no, well, after I'm done, I'll be I'll be done, and then we'll scan it and see if we get any uh, if we can replicate any other issues. She does have a cat code, which in some of these is a four four thirty code, which is bank two, which would be this one up front. Um, if it was a cat or an O2 sensor, uh, it sometimes you get those codes from um, a, a misfire. You can get it from a dirty mass airflow sensor. Uh, there was oil on the um, intake air temperature sensor. Yeah, clean that. You can sometimes get those codes also, misfires and those cat codes, lean codes, uh, from the um, throttle body. Uh, since this throttle body is also the accelerator pedal position sensor, I think A and B, one or two, uh, I mean, it's also with the pedal, but it's also in here. Um, and basically that throttle body is also similar to a mass airflow sensor too, because it delegates your barometric. Um, if it, say the plate wasn't closing fully, like you could see that it wasn't, and I'll do the reset procedure on that, um, that could cause it. So there's all kinds of things that could be causing that code. Hopefully during this process, she smelled oil burning and that's because the valve cover was leaking in the back and in the front. Um, she was getting a, a code for an injector code, but it was intermittent here that, and that was number one. I found number one was wet, the, you know, cracked on the outside and I couldn't visually see it wet. Uh, now that the temperature uh, in here, it's about dropped down to, it's at least 60 degrees in here. So I'm gonna check, cause there is a way to check the resistance on them if they're at a certain temperature. So we'll use a, a IR thermometer. I'll test to see what temperature is and we'll check the resistance to that temperature and see if it's bad. Tap on it a couple times just to see. But um, I'm pretty sure that's my fix on that. <laughs> and uh, no, that's about it. And uh, we'll get back on as soon as I'm ready. All right, so we're back. And it's about time to get a new bottle. This is just that's just engine lube. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything, and it just helps things go in better. <laughs> All right, so let's get this off. Yeah, I know. Very wasteful. Very wasteful. You know what I forgot to do? Uh, forgot to wipe all this down. So I'm not going to have you watch me because it's just kind of eating up my time I gotta get in there and get some brake clean brake clean and clean it all right all right so I'm back uh, this is what sucks a little bit about having a business you actually have to keep working and you don't have a guy in the back shop, okay? So like I always say, here's a procedure. And so maybe, I think you can see that. How they delegate is, these ones right here are 
for the spark plugs. You don't really have to worry about them. How, how it's going is it gives you a, a sequence. Each number is what the torque is, I think, or the how you go across it. Wait a minute, it's 105. Let me just look this up real quick. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, on these ones right here, this is how they have it. It's pretty much mainstream. So I'm gonna go here. This is because actually there isn't doesn't give you a uh, on this one. It just basically tells you on, on here. And, and, and any, besides, anyway, anything you're going to do in a vehicle, you're always going to do in a, when you're torquing it, you're going to put it into a crisscross type motion. Uh, you know, so you're not torquing down um, over torquing in one spot. You want it to be basically... completely uh like it'll sit down i don't know if i'm explaining it right man i think i'm just in a rush because like i get this done but it's like when you put your tire on you don't just go around in a circle you go in a star formation because as you're going across you're tightening it, you're actually ca causing more of a torque you know a better uh seal and that's basically what you're going to do here. We're good there. But <laughs> I really like going over by hand. Kinda one of those things I, I can feel it. As you start doing it for a while, a lot of the characters will let you know. You can kind of feel when you're not supposed to keep turning or when it should have more or it should go more and that's what I'm doing right now
Come on, man. All right, here we are. Now we're gonna finish up the back. And like I said, you don't need a lot of this. You just kind of got to coat threads a little bit. Yeah. And when you're tightening these up, I know it looks kind of like I'm putting a lot of torque on it, but really I'm not. I just, you just want them to be torn. You can kind of feel it. Ah. Broke my other socket, spark plug socket. Kind of sucks because now I gotta keep doing this. So anyway, I'm gonna pause it because it's just quicker for me to get through this. Then when I come to laying, putting the um, uh, no. Oh, also, okay, the PVC valve goes right here. I don't know if I'm pointing. It goes right here. It's already tightened on. You're only supposed to put like a. Put varying pressure on it. I usually tighten them by hand and just kind of just give it a slight turn because they're plastic. Uh, where is it? So the ends of them are plastic, so it's kind of like got like a pipe, a pipe thread at the end, and they're plastic, so you can't put much torque, if any, on there. Probably, I mean, using a torque wrench would be ridiculous. You just kind of snug it on there, and then it's. Bam. It's done. Okay, so that's as far as we're going to go right now. I'm going to pause it, and then um, when I'm laying this on, then we'll get back to it.
Wait. Is the, so there must have been an AC issue with this. There's all the caps in the back. All right, so we're clean here. This, I cleaned all this before. Skip. Okay, so here we go. What else? Let's see. I don't know if you can tell, but this is the old one. I already put a new gasket down at the bottom. Um, I'm gonna be really honest, sometimes what I do is I put a little bit of silicone around the outside here. I don't know if I'm going to do that uh, on this. Probably will. Because I always do. Uh, everything looks clean and tight.
Now she's got to go back together. Uh, I think and the, one of the things I always do is I make sure I go over everything. I make sure, like, you know, on startup that the injector's not leaking, which it's not. The injectors over here aren't leaking. Um, yeah, very rarely do they, but I just like to replace the O-rings in there on all of them just because. But... Uh, we are at the mercy of the customer. But at least they did their uh, valve cover gasket, which, you know, was nice because it was leaking. They also had some complaints anyway on it. So uh, that being said, we're done. down they don't have to be crazy tight believe it or not these are actually 105 foot pounds I don't like to do it it's on these you can pretty much feel it So the EGR, we said it's 53? Yep. Okay, so. All right, so we're just gonna start getting this together. So right now we're doing the EGR tube. So was this gasket broke? Like this? The valve cover gasket? Yeah, it comes off broken sometimes. Retain because, like I said, this is plastic basically that you're going to be torquing down on, and this one is 53 foot pounds. Found it, thanks. 80, 70, 6, 
it's the, and you said this was the EGR tube is 53? Yes. 